Disney Plus launched recently, and so I did what anyone with too much time on their hands would do, and scrolled through everything the streaming service had to offer. A little context, I fell in love with film at a very early age, and that love never ended. Every year I would watch hundreds of films, I used to keep track on a forum, racking up sometimes 150 plus movies in a month. I went to college and studied film, and then I'd move to NYC and start to write. As I was sitting there scrolling, as an adult, scrolling through this list of movies and shows on Disney Plus, something borderline absurd occurred to me. Every film that mattered to me on this service, every film I wanted to rewatch, of Disney's entire catalog was a decom. And then my mind started doing this. Here's a sentence I never thought I'd be saying on this channel. Disney Channel original movies are ridiculous, but they matter so much more than I knew. And yeah, I'm kind of serious. I know everyone remembers this moment, the jingle that preceded the movies, but I think what I recognized as a kid was that this was the first time anyone made a big deal about film for me. Disney Channel turned films into an event. See, Disney Channel didn't air traditional commercials. They used commercial breaks to advertise new shows, episodes, charities, and... Decoms. The idea was to keep kids engaged in the network itself instead of changing the channel. Disney would spend months bleeding out hype commercials for new films, showing teaser trailers, full trailers, behind the scenes footage, interviews with the actors, bumpers with them at Disney World. They would take the entire press junket process of a big budget studio film and condense it into a giant red carpet rollout for each decom. The network built this immense hype around every new film like it was a summer blockbuster. Every Friday night was like a new Avengers movie was hitting our screens. And once it did, they'd air that movie all weekend. The first time I stayed up past midnight was on the release day of a film about drag racing. Seriously, they played it like three times in a row. Disney Channel managed to treat films like events. They treated their movies like they were Oscar nominees. And for so many kids, this excitement over film was the first time they'd ever be excited about the medium. The first time they'd see the medium treated with such enthusiasm. It made film seem like an experience. But DCOMs also managed to be much more important for a more specific and sometimes strange reason. I didn't know what drag racing was. No idea it existed until I saw Right on Track. Johnny Tsunami is the reason I've spent the last 15 years trying to figure out if a move to Hawaii for the surf is the right move for me. When I was in 8th grade, I was about to start at a boarding school, a military school to be exact, so I watched Cadet Kelly to make myself feel a bit better about the change. It didn't help, military school was awful, but Cadet Kelly was fine. The Even Stevens movie was my first exposure to reality TV and actually got me to watch The Truman Show, probably well before I should have been watching it. The point is, for millions of kids, DCOMs were their entry point. Their only exposure to so many things. The amount of kids that got into roller skating after watching Brink or writing after watching Read It or Weep is surely an incredible amount. Disney Channel set out to create movies that were about kids and teens for kids and teens. In the process, they also set out to make films that represented every possible hobby, sport, interest imaginable. Sure, things like Luck of the Irish, a basketball movie about a kid slowly turning into a leprechaun, did exist and was awesome, by the way, but so many DCOMs were about bringing you into totally foreign worlds. Worlds that did exist, an opportunity to see film as a lens for all sorts of people and things. They introduced you to horror, to suspense, to thrillers, dramas, every genre you could imagine. DCOMs were so many kids' first exposure to these things. The genres, these sports, these activities, these family dynamics, they got kids to want to try and experience new things. And some of these movies were also really important for much more substantive reasons. This DCOM is called The Color of Friendship. It's a movie about racism, about understanding prejudice, and it's about broaching those very difficult issues through a lens that kids and teens could understand. It's not a terrible movie. Motocross, on the other hand, is a very strange film that deals mainly with the issue of a girl trying to break into a boy's environment on a dirt bike. It's extremely heavy-handed with its messaging, but regardless, it's a fun movie that deals with something that matters. I was never exposed to some of the stuff that DCOMs dealt with. They were surprisingly unafraid to broach extremely sensitive issues in a way that most networks, like Disney, normally would have avoided, some of which taught valuable lessons about how to deal with these things or people. I was nine when True Confessions came out, a movie about a girl with an autistic brother played by Shia LaBeouf. Not only was it the first time I was ever exposed to autism, but it was also the first time that I understood that people deal with things that I had never seen before. And to this day, I think that these more grounded films are the very things that taught me that movies can teach. Movies can help, movies are important, film can change you, and other people. I still credit True Confessions as the film that originally got me into movies as a medium in the first place. Which is insane to say, you know, because it's a decom, but it's reality. And sure, I sat through things like Wendy Wu Homecoming Warrior. It was a movie, and it existed, and at the time, I enjoyed it. I think 
But for every Windy Woo Homecoming Warrior, especially when I was younger, there was a True Confessions. Yet I think that High School Musical is actually a good encapsulation of what DCOMs ultimately meant to kids like me. This kind of changed film for a good couple of years. High School Musical's international success brought musicals back into the public eye in a very big way. The combined success of American Idol and High School Musical helped pave the way for things like Glee, which I admittedly never watched, and introduced millions of kids to theater, musicals, and even Broadway. When this movie came out, all of a sudden, theater was cool in schools all over the country. The movie was everywhere you looked, and it was a movie that felt personal. Because I'd spent years watching every DCOM, and suddenly, one was on the world stage, and it felt like validation. Strangely, it felt like validation for film, movies, as I knew them. It felt like these things that I love so much, these movies, weren't just cool things where kids win homicidal houses and online sweepstakes. They felt like things that everybody could be a part of. They felt bigger than Disney Channel. And as I got older, I realized how big the art of filmmaking was. So much bigger than High School Musical, what truly great movies looked like, what the art of acting at its best was, and learned how important this medium was as a medium to make an impact, to have your voice heard, to entertain. This weird movie about mermaids happens to be a big part of my life. So is this, and this, DCOMs matter. Or they did, because for so many, they're where people like me fell in love with movies. And for that, these movies will always be a part of so many people. I think as we get older, we often say things like, well, Nickelodeon fell off, or Disney Channel's not the same, and that may or may not be true. It's worth pointing out that today, they're there to service and entertain a different generation. I just hope that networks like Disney, like Nickelodeon, understand the importance of film. I hope they understand the importance of making real things as opposed to just whatever this is. I haven't seen it, I don't know if it's terrible or great, but the point is is that while we've grown up, there are a bunch of people growing right now. These things are a gateway into one of the greatest artistic mediums that we have. Kids need DCOMs, which is, again, one of the strangest sentences I've ever said on this channel. Because trust me when I say, you don't want to go back on Disney Plus and see how some of these things aged. This episode was sponsored by Upstart. You know that credit card, the one you're afraid to look at and see what the balance is? If you've been avoiding your debt, it's time to confront it. This is actually a really, really great sponsor, being that, you know, some of you know my background is in business. And right now, with the markets kind of all over the place, Upstart can help you finally face all of that debt and pay it off. Basically, Upstart is a consolidation program. It makes things simple with one monthly payment in one place. Fast and easy way to pay off your personal loans, your debt, all at the same time, all online. It finds smarter rates with trusted partners because they assess more than just your credit score. Five minute online rate check. You can see your rate up front for loans from $1,000 to $50,000. You can get approved the same day, receive funds as fast as one business day. If debt is a problem, it's time to get that under control with Upstart. You can find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash nerdstalgic. This one's really important to me. A lot of you know my educational background. I didn't just study film. I also went and got my MBA. And a lot of you have asked what to do in downturns, especially some of you guys that are in spaces like crypto right now. Upstart is great. I know consolidation sounds scary, but this is a really good way to just get a handle on everything, especially if all of these things are coming out of your account every month and you just can't really find a way to keep track of it all. This is a good way to do that. It's a good way to keep it all in one place. Do your own research, obviously. Check it out. But yeah, upstart.com slash nerdstalgic. Great place to start. That is it for today's episode of Nostalgic. I know a lot of you probably didn't expect me to touch on something like this, but I do think it's important, and I think it's worth remembering, especially now that I'm going back and seeing some of these things for the first time in years. As always, if you enjoyed this video, press the like button down below. Also, hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss anything I put out on this channel. Also, next to the subscribe button is a little bell. That's just the notification bell. All it does is make sure you're actually notified when I upload, so hit the little notification bell as well. And on your screen right now are two more episodes of Nerdstalgic, so you can see what I put out recently. They are absolutely not about decoms but about other things that i think are interesting and i will see you guys in the next video